One of my favorite things to do in my downtime is fish. I especially love fly fishing, but I've never had a chance to cast with a cane rod. So I'm going to visit Jeff Wagner and Kazmira Orlowski. They're a husband and wife team who've been crafting bamboo rods for decades. I'm pretty excited to work with them. A craftsman battles for perfection, never willing to give in or walk away. I'm Eric Gorgeous. I build custom motorcycles using skills passed on by countless generations before me. I used to work nine to five, chasing money and titles, and it nearly broke me. So I started over. I decided to work with my hands to feed my soul. Please join me on a quest to uncover the skills that built our society. We'll discover what drives the men and women who I call my heroes. We'll learn their craft and maybe even find some inspiration along the way. There's a part of you in everything you create, your legacy, a craftsman's legacy. Hi. Hi, Eric. Kazmaira. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. And I'm Jeff. Hey, Jeff. Nice, nice to, meet to meet you. Welcome to Sunnybrook. Thanks a lot. You ready to build a bamboo fly rod? Oh, I sure am. Great. Let's do it. Come on in. Come on. In. Come on. I can't get over how beautiful this place is. Yeah, it's gorgeous, isn't it? Oh, man. I, I would love to live in something like this, you know? But I'd never get anything done. <laughs> Except for fish. Exactly. I'd be out there all day with coffee and cigars and just fishing and thinking. <laughs> so how long have you been coming out here? This is Sunnybrook Trout Club. Our 18th year teaching wow. classes out here. Wow. Um, we, when we decided we wanted to teach classes, we didn't have the room and the uh, capability to do it out of our home and our shop. And uh, luckily, we stumbled upon uh, Sunnybrook and talked to them, and they invited us to have the classes here, and it's, we've been here ever since. And what kind of classes are you teaching here? Cane rod building. Cane rod fly building. Fly fishing, fly rod building. All right. And how long have you guys been doing that? Well, I've been at it for 23 years, and Kazmaier came on board a few years after. Yeah, about 20 years now. How'd you find your way into it? I just sort of started by making wooden rod cases and nets and fly boxes and stuff like that. Um, that was the result of Kazmaier here getting me a table saw for Christmas. Really? Right. He was supposed to make me birdhouses, but I have yet, I have yet, to, see, I have yet to see a birdhouse. <laughs> Not one birdhouse. No, no, no. no. <laughs> That's fantastic. <laughs> I started selling those at some of the fly shops. Okay. And uh, so one day I was delivering a bunch of these and I saw a book on the shelf, Handcrafting Bamboo Fly Rods, and picked it up and I was just like, tr just transfixed with it. I was like, I got to do this, yeah. you know, and just jumped in. And he did jump in. <laughs> really? Yeah. I can remember the day when um, Jeff decided to um, start this business. Yeah. And he just sprung it upon me that he was going to quit his job. <laughs> really? <laughs> to build fly fishing rods, cane rods, full time. Oh my gosh! How'd that make you feel? Well, you know, it was a it was a bit of a shock, but at the same time, you know, I could see how excited he was. He was just like a little kid, all excited about this, and you know, it's like you want your partner to be happy and to be, you know, it looked it felt good to to see how excited he was. And sure. So he just said, "Go for it." Yeah, what else are you going to do, right. right? Well, what's the worst that could happen? The worst that can happen, it doesn't work out, and you have to go back to your job. Yeah, that's you a know? good way to look at it. Now, you're an avid fisherman, right? Correct, yeah. So you've been fly fishing your whole life? Well, I started out as a bait fisherman. Um, my grandfather would take us fishing in Pennsylvania. He had a little cabin in the Allegheny National Forest, and it was there that he taught us how to, to catch trout, you know, on bait, spin fishing. When I was in my early teens, I developed an interest in learning how to fly fish. 
At the time, this would be in the 70s, you know, most of the rods were made out of fiberglass. Um, but we had a, a fly fishing store nearby and they always had a few cane rods and it was like, like a magnet, you know. They were the most expensive ones too. Of you know? course, so of course. I dream of, it was like this dream object, you know, I was making money as a paper boy and doing odd jobs and stuff like that. When I started, I had a real long, clunky nine foot rod and it didn't cast very well. Mm -hmm. um, but then when I discovered how good they could be, you know, it's like, um, like a fine violin or a guitar or something that's all handmade, you know, they're sure. just wonderful instruments. And you both work hand in hand, do you enjoy it? Yeah, for the most part. <laughs> <laughs> it's a challenge. Yeah. You know, and it's, it's, it's different working together constantly yeah. too. It's like one of those things where like most couples, I don't think get to spend like as much time together as, um, you know, until they retire, basically. Sure. And, you know, we're around each other 24-7, 365. Do you remember the, the first cane rod you made? Oh, yeah. Yeah? The first one, like, uh, from picking up the book to having, like, the finished rod, it took about a year to do. Okay. Because um, at the time, if you wanted to build bamboo rods, you were pretty much on your own. You had to make your own tools. So, yeah, I remember the, the very first one I made, and... Um, I was, it was kind of rough, you know, cosmetically, but I was amazed that it actually cast, you know, put it, together, it actually works, you know. I was, I was kind of blown away by that. And sure. uh, we have a, a trout club in Cleveland, uh, Cleveland Natural History Museum Trout Club, and we were members there. And we went down for a meeting and they let me put it out for a display. And uh, a local physician, a cardiologist, uh, looked at it and asked, to, he wanted to buy it. And so I'm like, Okay, you know, I sold it to him, figuring that'll give me some money to make the next one. Sure. And um, then somebody else wanted one, then somebody else wanted one, so here we are. And it just kept growing. Yeah, exactly. How many do you think you've made over the years? <sighs> Gosh, I don't know. When we first started, um, we had kind of like big plans that um, it generally takes about 40 hours to build one. Okay. Okay, about a week. And so we figured if we worked together, um, you know, we could build two rods a week mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, we could make 80 rods a year and take all summer off to play. <laughs> oh, that'd be fun. Yeah, right? <laughs> That's how naive we were. <laughs> yeah, as we were very naive. It doesn't work out that way. It's all pretty much one at a time custom building. So you do an awful lot of talking with the customer to find out where they fish, how they fish, what their casting style is, all that stuff. And through the course of that, you know, these long talks with people and going back and forth with phone calls and emails and stuff, um, one of the wonderful things is at the end, you know, you've, you've done a lot more than like make a rod and sold a rod. You've made friends with somebody. Sure. And um, it's really cool. It's very rewarding because, uh, you know, we, we've met people through this all over the world. It's, it's mind blowing. So does that ever make you think about your legacy? Yeah, yeah. What you, you hope for is that they just enjoy it and they fish the heck out of it. You want them out fishing with it, catching a lot of fish, um, and then hopefully passing it down to their kids and sure. down to their kids again. So I want them to be around in 100 years. How do you look at yourself? Do you look at yourself as a craftsman or as an artist? I'd say a craftsman. Craftsman? Yeah. I mean, there's an art to it, but I think it's, um, it's primarily like a handcraft. Yeah. Yeah. I, I would think of it as a craft because I think um, I'm very practical and as much time as we put into the cosmetics of a rod, it's still a tool. Sure, sure. <laughs> Something to be used. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Has a utilitarian value to it. Right. So it sounds like you're going to have to uh, keep Jeff and I in line and off the water today while we learn how to make a rod. <laughs> we'll keep you off the water for a while, so that's for sure. Yeah, it's it's time-consuming process to build a rod, but it's um, I think you'll really enjoy it. Oh, I'm pretty sure I will. Hopefully we'll find some time to, to get out there and do a little fishing, though. Sure, I'm sure you will. You guys ready? Sure, let's right. do it. Let's do it. All right. Prior to the 1800s, fly fishermen used wooden rods that were at least 11 feet long and frequently rotted, warped, or broke. These issues led to experimentation with other materials, like bamboo. Samuel Philippe of Easton, Pennsylvania is credited with creating the first multi-sided fly rod made with split cane, which is the basis for the design still popular today. Hiram Leonard, 
a gunsmith turned rod maker, revolutionized the industry with the creation of a machine called a beveler. This allowed him to cut the six strips needed for Philippe's design with incredible precision and accuracy. Using this technique, Leonard opened a factory and hired a team of talented craftsmen to mass produce bamboo fly rods. The increased availability of high quality but affordable bamboo fly rods led to a golden age of fly fishing. Although fiberglass rods became very popular in the 1950s, there will always be those who prefer to cast with a cane rod. Jeff and Kazmira's beautifully handcrafted bamboo fly rods ensure that these fishermen will have something they can cast for years to come. So this is a piece of bamboo here, right? Yep, this is called Tonkin Cane. It's from Southern China, and it's the material used to make a bamboo fly rod. And how long does it have to wait and dry? Um, it's usually just sitting for about six months or so before we grab a piece. Because it's right. subsequently heat treated, which will drive off even more moisture. Oh, I got you, I got you. And you've got a fro and a mallet. A fro and a mallet, because the first thing we're gonna have to do is split this comb all the way down into two. So we're gonna split into it right, right in half? Right in half. All right, I was a little worried at first. I, was, I thought you were chasing me. But no, no, I promise. I feel better now. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so once it's split in half, then what are we gonna do? Uh, then we're gonna lay out our rough suction lengths for tips and for butts for the suctions we're gonna make. Okay. And then we're gonna cut them to length. And that's why you have a saw. That's correct. All right, and there's a propane torch over there. Oh yeah, yeah, the big torch. We'll apply the flame to the cane and it drives off excess moisture and raises the modulus or the stiffness of the bamboo. Sounds like we got a lot of fun things happening. Oh yeah. All right. Well, can you show me how to, sure. how to split this? Yeah, we're gonna turn it. And what you just basically do is you're gonna try to just eye it in the center. Oh, look at that. And it's just as you just walk it down. You walk it right down. Yes, yeah, so you wanna take over and give, it, give sure. it a good whack. Beautiful. There we go. All right. Okay. So our next uh, step will be to cut it to rough lengths. Okay. All right. We're gonna make a seven and a half foot two piece rod. All right. Uh, so that means the sections are gonna be about 45 inches long. I'm gonna take one side and shift it down a little ways. And why do you do that? It's a process called staggering the nodes. And the idea is, is that when you have the rod all assembled, that these nodes aren't on adjacent spots on, on the flats. Right, right, yeah. right, right. These represent weak spots in the cane, so you don't want them all concentrated in one area. That makes sense. And we'll make a mark here, and a mark here. Little C's mean cut. We'll use a Japanese saw. I'll hold it and just saw away at the cut mark. There you go. Well done. All right. Slide her on up. Okay. All right, one more. There we go. Right. Well done. All right. We're gonna start from the bottom and work our way up. Okay. Okay? Oh, wow. Wanna give it a try? Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Good. So do these other two yeah, here? Yeah, do Finish the other two. So that's fun. Oh yeah, everybody loves a torch. Yeah, why wouldn't you? All right. So now what do we do with these? Oh, well, we're gonna let them cool a little bit and then we're gonna take them inside the shop and continue splitting them down. Fantastic. Oh okay. yeah. All right. 
what do we do next? The next thing we're going to do is take one of these sections here uh -huh. and we're going to um, measure out into thirds and eventually we're going to take it all the way down to 24 strips. So a cane rod is just made up of multiple segments of this sort of put back together and it forms a hex? Yes, traditionally cane rods are hexagonal. Mm -hmm. We are going to then have to straighten these individual strips. We do that by using heat. With our hands, we're going to be pressing it and, and straightening it out. Really? Right, taking out any major bends or, or okay. kinks into the, in the okay. cane. And then after that, we're gonna go over to the belt sander. We have to get the nodes flush to the cane. So we just strip that right down. We're gonna sand it right down. Keep it on the line? Keep it on the line, tap that to get it started. But as you see, once you get past that first node, you'll be able to just use your hand and it really splits pretty easy. Yeah, it does. Now we're gonna take these and split them up three more times? Right. Splitting it right in half? I'm gonna split it right in half, like that. Oh, there you go. And there we got that. How many of these have you done in your life? Oh, I hate to even think. Can I try this one? Yeah. And then just right in half, eh? Right in half. Cool. We have to divide these again, right? Right, this right now, um, we're gonna end up with 24 strips. Right now we have six, so we're gonna divide these again, that's 12, and then we're gonna divide them even again. Oh my gosh. We start the same way, pretty much. We eye it, we're gonna go down in half, fro, give it a good tap, and then you're gonna go to the nail here. And we're gonna actually split like this. You wanna try? Of course. That's good. How's that? That's very good. So let's turn around. We just turn it, get the heat, becomes flexible. Got some of it out already. Okay, we got one more step to get you ready to go over to the planing forms with Jeff. You're gonna flatten these on the sander. All right. Good. Now this looks pretty serious. It is a serious tool. Yeah? What is it used for? Uh, this tool is called a planing form, and its use is to taper the strips that you prepped with Casmira um, so that we can glue it together into a blank. By the time we get them down, they're gonna be real, real tiny. <laughs> okay, let's see how it's done. All right, well we start out by taking a strip, mm -hmm. and we're gonna place it into the form. I'll take a few passes with the plane to remove some material, and then we'll flip the strip to the other side and take a few passes. Okay. And I'll count like five passes, and then we'll flip it, and we'll take five from the other side. But we're gonna take it down until we can't remove any more bamboo. That is crazy, look at that. Yeah, it's pretty cool, isn't it? It's amazing. So all we have to do now is do five more. <laughs> we've got enough to glue up a tip section. All right. All right, all right. so you ought to give it a try? Yes, please. All right. Beautiful. You are done, beautiful. You think so? Oh yeah, great job. Well that's the last one. Yeah. So what's next now that we have these done? Well we've got all six of them tapered up, so uh -huh. we're gonna glue them together, and in order to do that, we're gonna run them through a machine called a binder. Oh, 
binder. I thought I was going to have to use super glue and <laughs> magnifying glasses. Now the binder is just a little simple machine that applies a cross wrap of cotton thread that acts as a clamp until the glue sets up. Really? All right, so we just got to clear this up and bring yeah. the glue machine in. That's it. All right. Well, let's do it. Once the glue oh, wow. sets up, um, we remove it, uh, sand the blank of excess glue, cut it to length, and start our finishing process. All right. So step me through this. The first thing we have to do is cut the thread off. Yep, we're going to remove the thread, and then we're going to sand off the excess glue. OK. We'll cut the section up here to mount the ferrule. The ferrules are the metal parts that hold the sections together. We'll have to turn the ferrule station in the lathe. We'll slide some cork rings down onto it, and glue up the grip, and then turn the grip in the lathe. Oh, so these, the grip is, is just by stacking these up? That's correct. And then we'll, uh, we'll slide them down into position, glue them to each other and to the blank, and then we'll put it in what's called a cork press that will hold it until the glue sets. All right. Well, we've got a little bit of work left to do oh, before yeah. we're fishing. Seriously. <laughs> <laughs> Nice. And I can't believe how close we are. Oh man, we're almost there. Yeah, look at this. Just a couple more things to do. So we've got the uh, the bottom done. Right. Right? Yep. We've got the tip done. Yep. And you started to put one guide on. Correct. Right? I'll show you how to do that. Yes, please do. So we'll start with the first guide, which is called the stripper. Place it in position and just hold it. So to wrap the guides, you use uh, just silk thread. OK. It's a very simple process. So you start by bringing the wrap, uh -huh. and just rotate the rod. Oh, look at that. And there it goes. Do you go over or over, under? Over the top, and then go around three times with it. Good. All right. First one. So how many more do we have? <laughs> uh, we got about seven or eight more left. Oh, geez. Have at it. <laughs> fish, fish this through like this? Yep, just like that. That's it. That. There you go. <laughs> there we go. And we are done. So how'd you do, Eric? Well, I learned a ton, I'll tell you that much. Thank you so much. You're welcome, thank you. Thank you. Did a great job. Yes, oh, thanks. Man. Being outdoors on a lazy stream, it doesn't even matter if you catch anything. Spending time working with Jeff and Kazmyra gave me a sense of how much precision is built into a cane fly rod. The tools were amazingly simple, but so clever. As with any master craftsman, they make everything look so easy. <laughs> 